Welcome back. You're watching the Institution of Engineers of Kenya debate that will culminate in the elections that will happen in a week's time on the 21st of this month. This evening, the Royal Media Services Debating Hall will host the two candidates and also professionals who will be asking questions and as well as you, the viewers back at home, where we'll be sampling your feedback here this evening. With me in studio is engineer Shama Kiteme, who is a presidential candidate. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Also with us this evening is engineer Grace Kagondo, who is a presidential candidate. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. First question to you, lady and gentlemen, and you have two minutes to respond to this. In this race for the president of the Institution of Engineers of Kenya, what separates both of you? First with your grace. Thank you very much for your question and good evening to all of you. Um, I hope I can introduce myself. Yes, please. My, my name is Engineer Grace Modoni Kagondu. I'm currently serving as the first vice president of the Institution of Engineers of Kenya. From that position, I have a vantage view and understanding of the issues that are facing the engineer in Kenya and in the engineering sector. I bring on board professional experience spanning over three decades, as well as corporate experience, which is necessary for a success of, a, of an institution. I am a leader of, a, of a many years experience, and I bring on board that experience in leadership. I want to say that um, my manifesto is based upon three pillars. Okay. The three pillars being innovation, transformation, and impact. I want to say that I want to set IEK as a platform for opportunities. As the next president of IEK, IEK will be transformed into a platform of opportunities for our graduate engineers, for our seasoned engineers, and also for our student engineers. And that is what I want to bring on board. Our student engineers have been yearning for opportunities for mentorship, yeah. opportunities for attachments for the students, and an opportunity to showcase the talent so that they can grow to the next level. They will be looking for opportunities to move from graduate uh, a class of membership to professional uh, level of membership. That opportunity, I'm going to provide a platform for that. For the seasoned engineers, we are now, um, we need your expertise. You have built this country, we need your expertise. Uh, the, the government right now is rolling out a number of programs under the bottom-up transform economic transformation agenda. Your expertise will be needed, and as your next president, I am going to spearhead opportunities for you in that space, so that you can continue to bring your expertise on board and support the government in that particular regard. Okay. I want to say also that as a woman candidate, I bring on board another special quality, the, the quality of being able to empathize and care for the membership of our institution. From the student member to the graduate member to the seasoned engineer, I want a wholesome benefit for all the members of the institution. Okay. For the student um, engineers in particular, I want to ensure that the mentorship that they will get from us will be wholesome in the sense that it will take care of their professional knowledge and at the same time take care of their um, soft, the soft skills that they need in order to, uh, to do well in their careers. Thank you. I'm talking about being able to uh, enhance their, the communication skills, other global issues that are affecting our environment, climate, uh, climate uh, issues, um, writing skills, IT skills, so as to enhance their employability. Thank you. And that is what I want to bring on board yeah. for the student engineers, from the graduate engineers. Okay. And I will be the candidate who will deliver that. All right. Thank you. Engineer Shama Kiteme, what separates you from Engineer Grace Kagondo? Thank you very much. My name is Engineer Shama Kiteme. I'm a consulting engineer with the Engineers Board of Kenya and a fellow of the Institution of Engineers of Kenya. I have been serving in IEK Council and I've been responsible for delivery of two strategic plans for this institution. I have been responsible for transformation of communication to our members for the last two years that I've served as a Honorary Secretary. I have been responsible for working around delivering a unified scheme of service for engineers, and we have given a proposal to Public Service Commission. I bring solid experience and transformation um, agenda that I've been delivering for engineers. Now, my running cry 
this election is engineers will leap into the future. The acronym is LEAP, leadership standing, L standing for leadership. We will offer leadership that brings unity of purpose for engineers. We are going to make sure that when we have our functions, for instance, our convention, it is a national setting agenda. We are going to set the agenda for this country in terms of our economic transformation, in terms of employment creation. We are going to bring unity of purpose in engineers that brings conciliation and make sure that we move together. We'll bridge the divisions. There is no us versus them. Okay. We are bringing unity of purpose. We are bringing empowerment. We are saying no one is going to be left behind. We have a place for the student, for the graduate, for the corporate, for the fellow. We are bringing together vibrant advocacy for the institution. We are going to go out and make sure that the voice of the engineer is felt in this country. We are bringing together an effort at partnerships. We're going to make sure that we enter into partnerships with public and private sector entities that are going to be of benefit to engineers. So we bring together experience, we bring together focus, energy, and we're going to deliver for engineers because that is our reputation. We have been delivering for the last time that we've been elected, and this is the sound, this is the voice, and this is the heart of this candidate. All right. I take note of that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now get into the arena of the first thematic area of this debate. And it takes us to engineering and current events. And when I talk about that, and I'm sure this has been a concern amongst the 12,000 member body, the organization that you all aspire to be the uh, presidents and represent, the matter of structural integrity. I begin with you, Engineer Grace Kagondo. How can this be fixed? How will your precedence in the event you clinch this set be fixed? Thank you. The matter of structural integrity can be connected to, I, I know the question is uh, talking about the, the menace of collapsing buildings, which we have witnessed over the last uh, quite a number of years. And the reason we are seeing this kind of collapsing buildings is simply one. The public is not, and the, some of these developers of these uh, buildings are not making use of the resources in the engineers. The engineer, the professional engineer, the graduate engineer, they have the skills and the, the training to be able to at least give the proper guidance in how the building should be designed and how it should be so constructed. So that is the menace that um, is happening in the country. We have witnessed even buildings collapsing because the developer, not because of lacking funds, yeah. but choosing not to employ qualified engineers. Or sometimes, the, simply the ignorance. They do not know where to find the qualified engineer. So I am going to make it a policy, and, I, and I'm going to make it a point to en, uh, enhance, for enhanced um, engagement with the public, to educate the public. And already I have initiated this uh, initiative. Over the last uh, two weeks, or two weeks ago, I did initiate a campaign of Ongeanda um, Handisi Halisi, yeah. so that the public can be educated on how to tell who is a properly qualified engineer and who is not. Because we see a lot of, uh, we can call them quacks, or let me say unqualified engineer, uh, persons purporting to be offering engineering advice. Yeah. And that has become a very big uh, uh, risk. And, and that I think is because the awareness of what the value of the engineer is bringing on board is not, is not appreciated. Yeah. So I'll be running uh, campaigns uh, through your uh, platform, the media platforms, uh, through, social, I mean, through the print media, through the TV media, the radio media, to enhance the civic education. And as your, as your next president, I will ensure that there's not a single Kenyan who is left outside of that bracket of awareness, that there is somebody called an engineer, okay. and the engineer is there to serve them, and the engineer is to make sure that their developments are safeguarded, because engineering is all about safety, and, uh, and, and ensuring that, uh, protecting the investment of, uh, of, 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 the, of the developer. Yeah. So as, as, a, as the next president, I will ensure that that word goes out, and we minimize the issue of, uh, um, Yes. of collapsing buildings. All right. I will also collaborate very closely with our regulator because he's the regulator of engineering practice. Yeah. I will cooperate uh, very closely with the other agencies because this kind of menace requires a multidisciplinary approach. Yeah. So I will leverage on my experience in the sector and my uh, good relations, my diplomatic skills okay. that I have developed over the years yeah. 
to lead into to have engagement with the various stakeholders so that we find a lasting solution to the matter of yeah. collapsing buildings. Right. In addition to capacity building of uh, upcoming engineers, I am a structural engineer myself, and I am aware that uh, to become a good quality, a good structural engineer, you need continuous capacity building mm -hmm. to uh, continuously enhance your skill in line with. Um, uh, let me say, with, in line with the, uh, let's say, the local environment yeah. that the engineer is operating in. All right. Yeah. Let's put first to this, um, yes. engineer Grace Kagondu, because that seems to be a matter which is a thorn in the flesh of the umbrella body. In that regard, then, one of the agencies is the National Construction Authority, NCA. And in one of its audit reports, highlighted more than 200 Kenyans, and, and because the people are very key in this debate, were killed between 1990 and 2019. This has seen also the economy laws 2.4 billion Kenya shillings. And some of the citations done in that report includes poor workmanship and substandard materials that are put into these buildings. There is a growing demand, however, how, how can that be fixed, this specific question? Because this seems to be a problem that is perpetuating. Uh, let me say that um, the industry today is, has been ill-fritated by substandard material. You will find uh, steel that is not uh, the right standard in the market. You will find cement that is not of the right quality in the market. Now, if in the absence of the engineer, it becomes very difficult for a developer to be able to identify which are the fake materials and which are the properly certified materials. And that is why the emphasis becomes employing qualified uh, uh, professionals to guide the construction. Number one, to guide the design of the, of the, of the structures. Number two, to oversight the uh, construction. And by the way, you find that many developers will engage an engineer or a qualified uh, engineer to undertake the design. But midway, yeah. that engineer can as well be dismissed uh, when it comes to the supervision, because now the approvals have been gotten, have been gotten from the uh, local authorities. So the, uh, the idea is use the engineer to get the, the approvals and then shut them off and proceed your construction without that kind of supervision. And that is where the gap has been. Okay. But when a, a qualified engineer is retained on site from the beginning to the end, that building will, sound very, uh, will stand uh, mm. sound. Mm. And from IEK, from where I stand, we have a register of qualified engineers who are available to support the public with their needs. We have very many qualified structural engineers who are always ready and available. And uh, the, the only thing is, I want, to, I want to make the IEK the platform where the, um, the public can know where to source these engineers. All right. yeah. Engineer Kiteme, that is also a fundamental problem, that if you win this set that uh, you have to address, it's the elephant in the room. How much has corruption contributed to this when we talk about the integrity of the structures? Well, thank you very much uh, for that question. Now, let me say that I'm a practicing civil structural engineer for 15 years and above. I have been involved in design of engineering structures, especially buildings. So I am practicing and I understand the issues in the industry. I have been privileged to sit in the National Committee on Finalization of the Billing Code. I've also been, and that was published um, on first this month. I've also been involved in the National Committee on Implementation of Eurocodes. And so I've been involved in developing standard, standards of practice for engineers in this country. I've also been involved in regulations. And I know where we go wrong. We go wrong at the level of the de developer. The developer does not want to engage the engineer. They want to engage the engineer to get the approval at the counties. When the approval is, is done, they do not want to retain the engineer. Now we design buildings for safety, functionality, economy, reliability. You need the structural engineer to be retained during the course of implementation of the building so that they can do quality control and quality assurance. What we will do, we will engage counties. And last year during our convention, I engaged the deputy president, Rigadi Gashagwa, and I asked him to give us a plot platform at IBEC when the national government and county government have sessions. We will engage counties because where we have the problem is approval level at the county level. We have people at the county level through corruption 
using licenses of practicing engineers to register billings for unscrupulous developers. So we'll engage to make sure that engineers are retained during the implementation of the billings to make sure that the billings are constructed, they are supervised from the startup to the end by engineers. We will work to make sure the approval process does not bypass engineers, their licenses, their practice licenses are used and they are not involved. We will work with the National Construction Authority to make sure that the regular inspections on site, they follow through to make sure engineers are involved and we have regular filing of the findings on site on a platform in NCA so that then we can follow the trail of the design, supervision, construction and completion so that then the building can be issued with a certificate of occupation. So as a practicing engineer, I know corruption is playing a big role. And just today I was talking to colleagues telling me that here at City County, I mean City Council, I mean Nairobi County, it's very difficult to get approval done. You have to, you are forced to pay bribes. That is an example. And I'm calling upon Governor Sakaja that you need to streamline the approval process in the county because the engineers are suffering. They are submitting their drawings and your officers there, they are not interested to do their work correctly. And you are going to work with the counties, we are going to work with the national government, we are going to empower the office of chief structural engineer so that they are able to issue regulations okay. within the industry. So you're talking to a practicing engineer who knows where it hurts, and I'm glad I've been here, discuss this matter again and again. Of course, probably you're even quoting me because the last time I was here, we were discussing this with Safrin Otieno. All right, uh, yes, a practicing engineer, you all are practicing engineers. And isn't it then damning when the National Construction Authority in its report also highlights that in some of the cases, you, you talk about failure and collapse in the streamlining processes and the regulatory framework, and you have been practicing all this time. Yes, you are seeking the highest uh, authority at the Institution of Engineers of Kenya, but what have you done as your level, as practicing engineers, starting with you, Engineer Grace Kagondu, to highlight some of these issues not necessarily because you are campaigning for the presidency, but because professionalism calls for it and highlighting of such problems calls for it because you talk about Nairobi and the number is 33 buildings that have collapsed. That's a lot. That's a huge number. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I can say that uh, indeed the menace of collapsing building has been with us for some time. And um, from where I sit as a structural engineer who has practiced uh, uh, for a number of years, I was actually privileged to be involved in the, in the design of the Times Tower building, which, is, as you know, is a, has been, was the tallest building in East and Central Africa for the longest. And the standards of that building were, are impressive. I can tell you that. When we had the bomb blast the other day, the buildings around, them, around it uh, suffered some, uh, some shock. But the Times Tower building stood, st stood, uh, stood strong without any signs of failure at all. So that tells you something. Um, the issue of standards the issue of employing the right contractors to do the job. We have a lot of contractors in this country who do not necessarily have the competent people to work for them. And that is an issue that um, NCA, we're happy that, I'm, I'm, we're happy that uh, NCA has taken it up. We, uh, in the past, I haven't been engaging, because as I said, I was, I've been in the leadership of, for some time, uh, in, the, in the leadership of, in the engineering space, and I've had opportunity to uh, engage with the NCA and we have talked about the issue of ensuring that even the people who carry out this construction, like the, the artisans, the fundies, even the guys doing the, the mix, they need to be trained. And I'm very happy that NCA has been doing very good training on, in, that, in that regard. And we have also seen that even the Tibet associations and uh, organizations are coming up, and they're also training a lot of people who are required in that, uh, in that, in that space. Because a safe and sound buildings are rely on a triangle. Yeah. We have the engineer at the top, but the implementers at the bottom, the technicians, the craftspeople, are all required also to be trained. Because without the proper training for them, they cannot support uh, the, the teams on top. Mm. So that kind of uh, discussion with the authorities, that kind of uh, collaboration, and emphasizing the weaknesses that we see is something that I have done for a long time. And I will continue to do through the mentorship program that we do, through the uh, uh, round tables co co um, discussion that we normally do. Uh, with the agencies like NCA and also other regulators like uh, EBK and NHC because we are all in that same space. Without that 
collaboration and discussion, even with the county government uh, officials, they will not understand where we are coming from and they will not be able to uh, adopt to, uh, to, the, to what is required to be done. Okay. Engineer Kiteme, when you talk about interagency cooperation, which is uh, very key, uh, talk about the National Building Inspectorate, the county governments, the National Construction Authority, and it's, it's concerning, is it, when, for example, the, the National Building Inspectorate covered 14,895 buildings, a majority of that, more than 80%, 10,799 buildings are unsafe. And it added, the National Construction Authority, that these unsafe buildings or structures are dangerous and will eventually collapse. This is a red flag that must be addressed. What is the easy, immediate fix? Well, thank you very much for referring to that report. I'm privy to it. But I want to begin by saying that there is something I've been doing as a practicing engineer. I have a PRD, I've sensitized the public. I have been involved in development of the Billy Code, which is a legal framework to continue to tighten the gap. We have set standards of practice for engineers. We have specified that, and immediately it's going to be gazetted. It's going to be very useful in, in, in you know, um, addressing some of these challenges we have. But more importantly, we do not lack laws. We do not lack space to regulate um, 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 our practice to make sure that these things do not happen. A very key plank of the problem we are seeing is basically enforcement. There are several agencies that are involved in the billing sector. NBI, you mentioned it. There is NCA. There is um, the counties. There must be working collaboratively, an effort working collaboratively to make sure that we address this menace. As the president of IEK, I will have a near of everyone across the board. I said COG, I've worked with them. I said NCA, um, I've, I've worked, I've been involved in the development of the building code, so I have a good working relationship with them so that we can bring together a single portal where the approval of buildings is not in disparate manner the way it has been. And then it will also make sure that we have a way of tracking of the billing tracking the professionals involved, so that we do not have quacks involved in the sector. We will know that who is the engineer involved, who is the architect involved, who is the QS involved. That is what you're going to be involved in bringing together the multi-agencies that you're talking about. Now, the buildings that you have referred to, yeah. there are several things. You assess the condition of that building. If it cannot be salvaged, of course, you have to demolish, because I said earlier we design buildings for fun functionality, safety, economy, reliability. So that if a building really you cannot salvage it, of course we have to demolish. Sadly so. But there's something we do as structural engineers which we call retrofitting. You can retrofit some of these buildings and then they become sound and they're safe for occupation. So the about over 75% and we know that Professionals are involved only in about 20% of the development that we do. So our engagement, of course, to make sure that users understand. And it's very important, you, as someone who is going to get to, to, to move into a house, yeah. to ask for the developer to give you certificate of occupation, to show evidence of how that building was constructed, the designs and all that, so that then it is evidence, prima facie, that this building is safe for you. And so we will continue engaging the public and tell them, if you see a building that is lacking this paperwork, then you need to petition the authorities. If the building has to be retrofitted, we retrofit. Those that we have to vacate, we vacate immediately because okay. of the state of the public. So I bring experience in this area and I'm the solution in this kind of menace because I'm a practicing engineer and I know where it paints. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, to address this problem in the building control process engineers um, Grace Kagondo and uh, Shama Kiteme, then is, is it time to empower the National Con Construction Authority, for example, as it recommended in the report, to be given the powers to carry out investigations and recommend prosecution? Because of all the buildings that have collapsed, we have rarely seen prosecutions that have gone successful. Is it time then to control the building process and empower the NCA. Okay, let me say this uh, from my um, from my understanding. The issue that the challenge here is compliance. The rules are there, the regulations are there, the building code is there, 
but is it being followed? Is there capacity to supervise all the buildings that are taking place? You will find that in some places, even the security is, in some places is, 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 a, is a challenge. I do recall another, uh, one of the recent buildings that collapsed and we went to look at it. The issue was that particular place, it was like zoned off. Nobody, the, nobody could enter it. Yeah, the developers were able to uh, proceed with the, de with the development. The NCA had gone to the site. Yeah. They had marked this building with an X, meaning that it needs to be demolished and it should not proceed. But the moment they were out of the way, the con construction continued. What does that tell you? There is no, there is no capacity to ensure that what has been marked as not uh, to be demolished or not to continue, there's no way of ensuring that that particular building does not continue, does not continue to be constructed. So there's an element of capacity. So I think what NCA, in my view, needs is actually to be empowered to have more capacity to be able to uh, uh, ensure compliance yeah. with the rules and the regulations that they have set in terms of the standards that are being, uh, that developers should follow in putting up uh, their buildings. Uh, in terms of the uh, persecution, I think perhaps that will be uh, maybe the, uh, the next uh, the next level. But I think if they were empowered enough to do the um, to, to ensure that the compliance is being followed by the developers, I think that will be the next uh, a good step. And furthermore, I think what they also need to do is to ensure that the contractors who are being registered are employing engineers, uh, or they have got uh, engineers in their uh, in their leadership or management, because sometimes you'll find contractors are, are business people, and a business person is not really concerned about the quality of a, of a building to a large extent. He, their, 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 their focus is on the profit of the building. So you'll find that the, the temptation to cut down on some procedures uh, that require, that will build, make the building to be safe, they will find a, a shortcut out of it in terms of materials, the quality of materials, and, and, and even the supervision. So it's, it's, it's important that um, even the contractors, and I can tell you that um, I was involved in the, in the NCA uh, uh, Construction in Excellence Award, and the, the contractors that won, and the contractors that scored highly, yeah. were the ones who had engineers, qualified engineers, in their, in their, in their organization structure. Mm -hmm. And the contractors and the contractors that didn't have them uh, were disadvantaged to that regard. So I think that is something that NCA should take up and be very particular uh, in, in ensuring that that kind of uh, engagement of engineers and qualified personnel yeah. uh, in, the, in the contractors' uh, management and organization yeah. is, uh, is en enhanced. Yes. Yeah. How key is that, Engineer Keteme? The, the NCA, is it time that it be empowered to carry out um, more in terms of its outreach and bring people to prosecution? Well, I've heard my friend, Engineer Morris, catch the ED request for those prosecutorial, I mean, powers. And granted, he has asked for them. I have, I have no problem with that. What we know is that we have the legal framework, but enforcement is lacking. If that could help, so be it. But the other thing we need to look at is NCA is registering contractors. Construction is largely 90% construction materials. Construction materials, the experts in the science of construction materials are basically engineers. So when you are registering contractors and you are engaging them uh, at NCA, you need to make sure that if it is class 8, class 7, up to class 6, for instance, you must have an engineer who is professional, licensed, practicing engineer, to be one of the directors and to have evidence that they are involved in the running of that construction company. If you're talking about class A, I mean class 1, and all that, you then must ensure that you actually have a consulting engineer or, or a professional engineer permanently employed there. We run hospitals. Okay. We run law firms. Mm -hmm. You do not run a hospital without a doctor, without a nurse, and experts in healthcare. You do not run a law firm without lawyers. Why do we want to run construction companies with people who are not construction experts? And this goes back to NCA, so that at the preventive side of it, make sure that every contractor you're registering has an engineer to be actively involved in the running of that construction yes, company. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes, when you do that now, yeah. of course, the, the prosecutorial powers given to them, we need to hold the culprits responsible. There's someone responsible. There's a developer responsible for the collapse who didn't engage an engineer. You will hardly find of all the buildings that have collapsed, an engineer was involved. They were involved maybe yeah. to get 
the approval, okay. but then they were, they were not retained. Thank so you. basically, we need to go for the real culprits, and if that involves giving NCA powers, yeah. I have no problem with that. Thank you. Lady and gentlemen, when we get back here at the debating chamber, we'll head to our second thematic area, which is engineering and academia. The question of graduation, transition into the workspace, and many questions from graduates who are watching this broadcast and they want answers as to how you can fix some of the problems that face them. But for now, we cross over from the debating hall to our Citizen TV studio where my colleague Jeff Koinange is standing by with the outgoing president of the Institution of Engineers of Kenya, IEK. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yes, indeed, I'm with Eric Ohaga. He is the outgoing president of the Institution of Engineers of Kenya. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Look, you heard the debate, right? You heard the two candidates debating. The one thing that came across is a lot of blame game. Engineers blame developers. Engineers blame quacks. But the question I want to ask you is, how do you rein in rogue engineers? I must say, the manner in which an engineer is designed is to provide solution to humanity. And if, as a country, we can make use of our professionally trained engineers, I can assure you that this menace is going to be eradicated. For the longest, we have talked about this. But of course, in any given ecosystem, you will never fail to find some rogue personalities. And of course, in dealing with that, the regulator, which is the Engineers Board of Kenya, will always have an opportunity to undertake a certain disciplinary if, for sure, an engineer is found to be culpable in that particular regard. But in most cases, we have said that there are several approvals of design. Like in Nairobi County alone, 17 applications being received every single day. If you multiply that by the number of counties, there are about 700 approvals. But I can tell you the engineers are not involved in most of these projects. So we are available to offer our services. And what we are telling the public is that make use of these engineers. Jeff, I can even ask you, I know you have more contacts of a plumber than an engineer. <laughs> uh, and that speaks to our problem in this country, that we are available to be utilized and we want to be utilized so that we can provide the solutions that we have been trained to provide. Okay, that's a good point you make because um, I find signs for plumbers on every corner of every road. Plumber services here, call Jackson here, you know, and this number. Maybe you people, you don't sell yourselves enough. Thank you so much. And I think that is exactly what we are working on, on the soft skills. And we are, we are trying to uh, devolve our services. Uh, right now we have eight branches. That means the engineers are moving from the towns, going into the branches, so that these services can then be accessed to these people. And I think by so doing, we'll be able to make sure that our services are accessible and also dissemination of this information reaches the majority of our people. So that as you read that plan by, you should also be able to find an engineer somewhere. We should also looking at instances of establishing our own Muhandisi Plaza, where you can come and find engineers, consulting engineers, professional engineers who are able to provide you with the services that you require. And by so doing, I think we should be able to make progress in that regard. Yeah. Yes. You, you're just about to complete your two-year term. Correct. And it's non-renewable, right? It's just one two-year term. One two-year term. What's the one thing you can say you did that's going to last in the next three, four, ten years? The visibility of this institution, we have taken it to the another level. Uh, I, I must say that uh, over the last three decades, this institution has grown from uh, when we got it from the whites, then the, the, the black leadership took uh, the, the mantle of this institution. And then over the last five years, we've actually grown this institution in terms of visibility, in terms of growing capacity of our membership, evolving our services to the branches. That is one thing that we are very passionate about now that uh, people are able to relate with our services wherever they are. The graduate uh, training program, the mentorship program that we have instituted, which has seen the number of graduate engineers also becoming professional engineers. You saw the numbers are not very good currently, mm. but we are looking forward to increasing that number. We were at 9,000 
uh, we are now at 12,000. You can see 3,000 addition uh, growth in membership over the last two years. It's not a mean achievement, and that means that we are making progress in our strategic pillars. And out of those 12,000, how many are uh, accredited? Out of the 12,000, 3,500 are accredited. So you still have a long way to go. Yes, we have a five-year strategic plan. We want to triple that number to 10,000 as we even move to the Washington Accord that requires that for every 5,000 Kenyan, you need to have an engineer in it. But right now we are operating one engineer serving 13,000, which is quite low in our regard. Sure. sure. Eric, I want to take a break, come back, talk some more, and also go back to Studio B for the debate with the two candidates. In the meantime, what are your questions? What are your comments? Uh, tweets are coming in very thick and very fast. We'll get to those in no short while. In the meantime, let's take a quick break. Jeff Kananga live, the debate with the Institution of Engineers of Kenya. Takes a break. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs>